more than a hundred years before the beginning, the Eldian Empire rules the world. It's ruled by the Fritz royal family and the great other eight titan shifters. Together they make up the nine titans. Because these auspicious people have nothing better to do, they decide to beat the shit out of each other and start a civil war. Then comes a new king with the name of Karl Fritz, not to be confused with the original King Fritz, slayer of ladies and lover of milfs, who started the whole ordeal 2000 years ago. This Karl was a very peculiar individual. He paid too much attention in history class and realized that his Eldian empire did some pretty yucky things to the people they subjugated. So instead of trying to end the war and fix the injustice like any half decent monarch, he decides to adios. He takes most aliens to the island of Paradis, builds three walls filled with colossal titans, wipes the memories of the outside world from his people, and threatens to rumble the world if anyone comes near his island. Back home, the oppressed people of Marley ascend again. They take control of the great titans and end the Eldian Empire for good and all, with the help of the king and the Tiber nobles. Yes, Karl brought down his own empire. The oppressed Marlians become the oppressors and the remaining Eldians are treated like dog shit. Sometimes dog meat as well. Meet Grisha Yeager, also meet his sister. Eldians are the only race that can turn into monsters, so as a minority living in Marley, they are treated like royalty. Russian royalty to be precise. One day, Grisha is minding his business and enjoying the lovely sunshine when one fine gentleman decides his sister is tonight's supper. Grisha is understandably a little bit upset about this. <laughs> So he joins an Eldian rebel group of restorationists who are sick of the daily royal treatment. They wish to topple Marley once again and shaft a royal spear up those motherfuckers asses like the good old days of Eldia. Long story short, they have an informant in Marley called the Owl and a woman with royal Fritz blood called Dinah. Grisha marries Dinah and they have a son called Zeke. They train him to become a warrior. Warriors are Eldian soldiers working for Marley to inherit the powers of the Nine Titans, and as a reward, they are treated a little bit less royally. Grisha hopes his son will inherit one of the Nine Titans and become a spy for the rebel group to bring down Marley. Except a lifetime of trauma and anger did not make Grisha a great parent. Zeke has had enough, so he informs on his parents and the whole Eldian rebel group is kaput. As a result, Grisha, his wife, and fellow conspirators are in for the royal treatment premium, which is being sent to Paradis and getting titanized to roam the accursed island for eternity. Everyone gets turned into titans before Grisha is saved by the Owl, the Eldian double agent who infiltrated Marley and was working for the rebels. He had acquired the attack titan, one of the great nine, which had been lost since the great civil war, and he kills all Marley soldiers that have had the misfortune of attending this merry occasion, including the fine gentleman who killed Grisha's sister. The owl, whose name is Erin Kruger, is dying because the holder of one of the nine titans has only 13 years to live after inheriting it. So he has to pass his power to Grisha for the cause. He injects Grisha with his magic fluid which makes him become big and then lets Grisha eat him. That could have been worded better but I did not make the rules. Grisha now takes on the task of getting the founding titan from the royal family and returning the glorious Eldian empire once again. He arrives at the world, marries a woman named Carla, and they have a son named Eren. In the meantime, he secretly investigates the royal family to locate the founder. Back on the continent, Marley becomes the dominant nation in the world. They are not happy with living under the constant threat of being rumbled by the pesky devils on the island, and they want to finish the job of destroying the last vestiges of Eldia for good. They decide to get the founder. They send four of the nine to infiltrate and retake it. The four are the armored, colossal, female, and Joe titans. Now, the Marley buffoons who came up with this operation are not the brightest, because entrusting this massive undertaking to four child soldiers will go about as well as you might expect. They lost the Joe Titan to a random good Samaritan on day one. <laughs> The three remaining warriors continue on and arrive at the outer wall. Berter holds Colossal destroys the outer gate. Annie invites some pures for dinner and Reiner's armored breaks the inner gate. This is where episode 1 starts by the way. 
In the chaos, Grisha's wife is eaten by his ex-wife. His son and adopted daughter escape to the second wall. The warriors then masquerade as refugees as well and infiltrate the second wall to locate the founding titan. Grisha learns that Marley have come at last to finish the Eldians, so he decides to act. He finds the royal family. They have a new queen who had grandiose plans of freeing the Eldians from the gulag that they live in. But as soon as she inherited the founder, she somehow became locked on keeping them inside the walls. Turns out, good old King Carl programmed the founder inheritors to follow his command and shackle the aliens inside the walls. As long as the holder was of the royal Fritz blood, they are bound by his command. Also, his warning about rumbling the world if they attacked parody was just a joke. Yeah. He would accept Eldians being eradicated for the sins of their ancestors if the enemy so wishes. Grisha realizes that to free Eldians, he must take the founder from these royal retards, but he is hesitant to murder the royal family and consume the queen. Grisha now has both the founder and the attack titans, but he is dying due to his 13 year limit. He finds his refugee son Eren, turns him into Eren Premium and passes his powers on to him. Though Eren conveniently doesn't remember any of it to keep the suspense and the mystery of the story. After successfully sneaking into the second wall, the Marley warriors join the army to get close to the royal family, who they assume still hold the founder. The pesky devils on the island are unaware of the world outside the walls. Their military has a branch of weirdos who go outside the walls to investigate, but all they achieve is get eaten every time. Uh, coincidentally, some might say conveniently, the random Samaritan who snacked on the Joe Titan and acquired its power also joins the same cadet unit. The illegitimate last female member of the Fritz royal family, Grisha's son Eren, also joins the same cadet unit alongside his two sidekicks. This Eren character has a few loose screws in his head. Once when he was 10 years old, the daughter of a family friend got abducted, so he decided to go the wrong house, fool! Now, the Marley warriors are here to get the founding titan and get the fuck out, but when they investigate, they conclude that the royal family has expired, the current king is a figurehead and the military government is in power. So where the hell is the founding titan? To flush the holder of the founder out, they break the second wall. Same routine, Bert Rolls breaks the outer gate, while Reina prepares to break the inner gate. Wait, what on earth is that? Isn't that the attack Titan Marley has been looking for for a century? New plan. Turns out the crazy nutcase Bozo is the holder of the attack Titan. Our motherland Marley will give us medals and some snacks if we can return it. We need to get the attack Titan first before the founder, so we're not gonna break the inner gate just yet. Huh? Who did that to Marco? They call off breaking the inner gates. Those pesky devils have used the attack titan to plug the hole that the colossal had made. The warriors decide to split up. Reiner and Beritors will stick with Eren in the weirdos core, while Annie joins the military police in the inner wall to investigate the founding titan and help them covertly. The change in their course not to break the gates did not go unnoticed, however. A certain Erwin Smith has figured out that there are outside enemies inside the walls. He concocts a plan to expose the enemy by using Eren as bait in an expedition outside the walls. Reinar and Bergbol join the expedition that follows and inform Annie to follow suit. After a kidnap murder side plot for some reason, she does catch up in her female form. The whole expedition is a bloody mess. The devil spring the trap but can't capture Annie. She has a fight with the attack titan but gets herself beebladed by the midget and his cousin. Eventually everyone calls it a day and returns home. Annie's cover is blown though and the pesky devils trap her in the innermost wall and capture her. She crystallizes though so they can't get any information out of her. 
Back in Marley, the government was starting to suspect that sending four kids on the mission was not a very bright idea. So they send in the Beast and Card Titans to ascertain what was going on. The holder of the Beast Titan is Zeke Yeager, Grisha's first son. Now, after Zeke snitched on his parents and got them premium royally shafted, he got rewarded for being a loyal good boy by inheriting the beast from his mentor. He developed some pretty nihilistic views about the Eldian race after seeing how the curse of the titans makes them get treated like shit everywhere. He wants to free his people from the pain by taking away their ability to reproduce and letting them die within a hundred years. Unbeknownst to the Marlin government as what, he has royal Fritz blood from his mother so he has special abilities that makes this possible. Only he needs the holder of the founding titan to achieve euthanasia. He arrives on parody with the car titan to suss out how the mission was going. Turns out the kids have botched the whole operation and shit is out of control. So he turns some poor villagers inside the walls into some poor villagers premium and crashes the party where his fellow warriors are. In the chaos, it is revealed that the Joe Titan which they had lost had been their fellow scout Ymir the lesbian. So they need to bring her back to Marley as well. Afterwards, the scouts are making sure that the walls are intact after killing all premiums inside it. Reiner and Brentford are sick and tired of this whole thing and they wanna go home back to Marley ASAP. Reiner in particular has had one traumatic experience too many and started showing symptoms of PTSD, DID, WMD and ADHD. He had figured out that the pesky devils he was trying to murder inside the walls are just people like him and all that he had learned growing up as a kid was just a big pile of horseshite. The cognitive dissonance was driving him insane. He finally snaps, tells Erin who they really are, that they killed his mother and that he must come with them meekly or else they will kill the rest. Erin, understandably pretty pissed, transforms to beat his ass, which he almost does if only the sky did not start raining colossal. The warriors grab Erin and the incapacitated Ymir and promptly bounce. However, they are pursued by Erwin Smith and the others immediately. The warriors convince Ymir to cooperate with them and abduct her royal girlfriend. The scouts catch up to get Erin back and a chaotic battle ensues. The day did not start well and got progressively worse. Erwin invites some good Samaritans premium to join the freak show. Because he has balls of steel, he lines up for a charge and leads the scouts into mayhem. The charge is successful and they get Erwin back. Now it's their turn to bounce. One of the guests to this rowdy party is Dinah, Grisha's first wife in premium form. She is of the blood royal, so when Eren makes contact, he accidentally activates his founder ability and controls the surrounding premium party guests. They dine on Dinah, then pin down the warriors, allowing the scouts time to escape. Reiner realizes that they have successfully located the founder, their main goal, even though they f up everything else. They were due one stellar performance review. Ibir helps the warriors escape so they can leave Historia alone and return to Shikanshina and they call it a day. They find Zeke in Shikanshina and he gives them a very warm embrace for their exemplary performance on the job. They want to get Annie back but Zeke prioritizes retaking the founder and the attack titans inside his half brother. Reiner challenges him to a fight as a way to settle this dispute. It is decided, they will wait for the founder and the scouts to come, and they will complete their mission.